Hello. Today I'm going to be concentrating on practicing trees. Trees are a great and a very important element to your your paintings, particularly if you if you go in the direction of landscape painting. I'm using a um, <clears throat> a Langton Prestige, and it is a, a 14 by 10 inch size, and it is a 140 pound, which is 300 GSM. It's, uh, it's glued on all sides, so I don't have to uh, wet it or whatever. Um, so, uh, and it's rough. So we'll place this down here so it's easy to see. Now the brush I'm using today is the one I use mostly. It's uh, an Escoda Perla. And it's a size 12. Uh, it's a synthetico, so it means it's synthetic. And I use synthetics because it's a lot easier to control that tip. So first of all, um, we're going to lay a couple of um, basic washes down. We're going to mix a, a wash of two different colours. We'll have like an warm colours or autumnal colours, some oranges there. And uh, we'll have some green on this side. I won't be using many colours for this and I'm also going to be putting on my Patreon site some uh, drawing aids so there'll be little tonal sketches for you to copy and practice um, and some little outlines if you're not too sure. Okay so from the top of the tree let's work our way down and we'll start from this angle. So, I do little sideways strokes like that to do my trees, and it's good to leave a few little, a few little areas there. In fact, I think I'm going to zoom in, right, so it's better for you. Okay. Hopefully, hopefully that's all right. Now, and I'm going to put a little line there so it just looks like there could be a a bit of a tree trunk going down and it's all about the shape it's, and this shape is made by these side to side movements now as we get, get a bit further down I like to add a little bit of extra colour so I'm adding some green here and I'm at a very, very light angle with this paint. It's not an angle I like to work on. Um, I used to go a little bit higher, so I might change that in a second. So I'm just lifting some of that out. And I'll get a neater wash of that, that green. And just dab it in there. It's just regular old phthalo green light, that is. And now I'm going to go back to the, just dab, I made a mess there, just dab some more of the orange into there. And let that make its own shape. A little trunk there, and we'll put a little bit of land there. And what's happening there is that's running down which allows it to make a nice shape. Now then, I'm just going to pause the camera a second because I want to alter this angle. Right, so I've altered that angle. Uh, it's uh, probably about 30 degrees now, which is nice and it's a strong angle, but sort of, which is going to help me when, uh, when I do what I want to do with this shadowing. So, I'm just going to let these colours blend into each other there. And now, on this this side of the tree, uh, I'm going to make a little bit more emphasis, do some shadowing, because I want the light to be coming from this angle here, from the from there. The light's coming from there, so there'll be shadows over, that, over there. So, so I'm just going to get a little bit of Queen Acidrone Burnt Orange and just under these little tips just under tips 
uh, just under these little areas here and now it just allows that tree to basically paint itself so that's one way of doing it now let's zoom out zoom out there I'm just going to move a little bit further in there okay now let's try another shape tree but I'm using a different shade green a bit of gold green so we'll start where should we start there okay so we'll put a long stick down there where are we long stick down there and we can we can be a little bit more sparse with our tree here it's like a, a cedar tree this which got and we're still doing the same side to side motion but I've been a little bit more exaggerated with this and bring these they got, they've got quite heavy trunks these cedar trees down there Alright, so as that's drying, let's what we can do is put a couple of little branches. See that? Just a few little branches around there, just to tell the story of the shape of that tree. Now we can add a little bit of this orange in just a couple of places only a few little places and it just makes it a little bit more interesting now let's wait until it dries and we'll come back okay now then before we go back on this let's just have another look at that tree it's it's nearly dried that so what i want to do is add a lighter colour so I'm just adding a little bit of yellow let's just see what happens here can you see the little shapes that it's making all the way around there beautiful it looks like it's got its own fall to it so we'll come back that back to that one in a bit now we'll go back to this now one in here we've got so I'll just zoom in. All right. Can I do it. There we go. So you've got like a two-tone colour there. So now we can emphasise that two-tone two colour by just adding a dark bit of um, a mixture of burnt sienna and a little bit of olive green. And we're going to put those just under these little branch areas here. Just under them. And just make your own shapes. I mean, they're good enough as they are, but it's just nice to just go the extra mile. There we are. Now I'll zoom out. And that looks like a nice tree. Okay, let's find another tree. Let's try a conifer. That's why I call me. I might have different names. So I'm just going to use mainly greens for this. So I'm using a bit of gold green. Green gold. And we always start off with a conifer. I'll zoom out a little bit. There you go. Conifer, a nice big long trunk. There we go. And that trunk, we, we make the shape with the brush. We make our mark with the shape of the brush. So starting from there, just dab. And you can see how that 
point of that brush makes a little pointy mark up there. See that? See it makes its little pointy mark there. That's just using the shape of the brush. So we'll continue down there. And what we need to do at the bottom, that needs to be rounded off there. So we'll just put that there. Just to remind us. And as we come down to the bottom, I'm going to add some pure olive green, which is a really dark shade of this green. Down there. There we go. And we can just shape it out a little bit now. Bring that shape out a little bit. There we go. And there is our crowd level. That's easy, isn't it? Now then, let's experiment a little bit with some different colours. Now, just here, I'm going to make a mixture. I'll just zoom out so you can see my palette. I'm making a mixture of this is Opera Rose. One of my favourite colours, this. It's really good when it comes to doing flesh tones. And it's just, it's great for doing, for mixing into oranges and things like that. So here's, there's an orange there. Let's see how we're going with them, shall we? Let's zoom back out now. Oh. So let's, do, let's have down there a nice big, this is a big chunky tree with lots of leaves on this, but I'm going to see we do the same again. Just go side to side, side to side. Now, um, I'm going to add a little bit of this opera rose to that colour there and see what happens. There we go, mm, down, down there. Let's make that colour a bit more gra grass coloured. Right. Now we can see how it's building up there. We don't really want that, so I'm going to lift some of this out. There we are. I'm lifting some of that out. Now, the top left, I'm going to add a bit of just clean water. Just clean water there. And what's that doing? It's pushing all that pigment out. I can lift out a little bit there. It's pushing the pigment over there to that side. Going down there. Let's try a bit more clean water in there. It actually it works for you. Right. I'm going to add a little bit of red to this now. Just a, red, a regular old caffeine red. It's creating lots of little shapes, which I really like those shapes. And we lift out where it's gone a little bit. It's welling up. It's creating its own little bead. Now, let's see what happens if we add a bit of yellow to that. And a lot of this is to do with the angle of, of your of your paper because it's got quite a strong angle on this and it's creating these lovely little shapes along there so I'm going to lift out keep on lifting out these extra little beady bits as it begins to tell its own tale now just when we get to the bottom I'm just going to add a couple of blobs of olive green There we go, just under these areas, and I'm going to put a little line. 
and it just looks like there could be some branches moving around there I left that bit out I don't quite like that thing that good squiggly lines it's made I'm lifting that out there we go we'll come back in a bit let's have a look what that's made that's done to that tree so it still needs to dry to lift out a little bit there and I'm going to just hook a it's a quite a dry brush just to the right hand side of this tree here there you go now that first tree we did remember that the first tree we did there we are it's dried a little bit flat so I'm going to I'm going to quickly dry that with the air dryer. Ignore the sound a minute. Right, we've dried that. Now then, I'm going to use a little bit of this um, upper rose. It's a lovely warm colour and we're just going to add a couple of shady bits over here and because it's dried underneath there we get a nice harsh or well, hard lines round edges as they call them don't they these are quite harsh edges and we do that to make the shape of that tree because when you get hard edges it tells us that the tail that it's a sunny day it's a very bright day if you had very soft edges it would mean that it was quite a dull day because the light isn't being cast so strongly on there so that's that one now we'll go back up to that last one which we've been working on and i'm going to give that a little dry as well And the same with that upper rose. Now it's not as dry as the first one. So those edges are a little softer. And it just shows a difference. It makes it look perhaps not as sunny a day. Right. There you go. Well, I hope you like that. It was a very short um, uh, lesson. Um, have fun painting your own trees. And thanks for watching.